Hello everyone, welcome to the watch before you buy video. In this video, I talk about my experience on a model kit I myself purchased and built. The purpose is to provide my personal, or sometimes subjective, but definitely honest opinion on a particular model kit. I'll go through the instruction menu, talk about the trouble I had, share some builder's tips, and uh, show you the complete model kit. The video is not to show off any model making skills. Instead, I want to show what an ordinary people can do with this model. Hope these videos can help you find out if a model kit is good for you or not, and help you avoid some of the mistakes I had when building this kit. So, without further ado, let's get started. Today, we want to talk about the Tamiya T62A Russian main battle tank. T62 is a milestone in Soviet tank design. Well, probably a milestone in all tank design. It is the world's first tank to equip with a smoothbore gun, an idea that is later copied by well, almost all major tank designers. The caliber is also very unique, and it, it is an upgrade to the T-55's 100mm gun, making T-62 a more lethal tank than the famous T-55. It was operated and is still in operation by over two dozens of countries. So for us skilled modelers, that means a lot of interesting diorama potentials. This particular model kit is manufactured by Tamiya in 135th scale. It was initially released in 1988. The item number is 35108. Right out of the box, you'll find three spools of plastic parts, labeled A, B, and C. Spruce A has all the wheels and the figure. Spruce B has the accessories to the hull. And Spruce C includes the parts that goes to the turret, such as the gun barrel. In addition, in the box, you'll find the upper and lower hull, the top and the base of the turret. In addition, there's a spool of polycaps and a mesh net, and finally, two rubber tracks. Next, we'll go through the instruction manuals. As you can see, included in this model kit, there are two copies of instruction manuals, one in English and the other one in Japanese. Just like any other Tamiya kit, the first page of the instruction manual introduces the Russian T-62A tank. But if you compare the, the Japanese version and the English version, you notice that Japanese version has a lot more information in it. So here, I would like to talk about the information that is mentioned in the Japanese version that are not mentioned in the English version. So let's get started. First, when talking about the ammunition types. In the English version, it mentioned that the other two types, other than the armor piercing shells, are the anti tank and the common shells. But in fact, in the Japanese version, the three types are armor piercing, heat, and high explosive. So the English translation is not very accurate. Second, the Japanese version talks about the pros and cons of using small spawn gun. So it says the advantages are the lifetime of the barrel can be increased and the time to manufacture the, the barrel is reduced. In addition to that, shape charge ammunitions will do better with smooth spawn gun. Armor piercing shells, initial speed can be improved, the drop of the speed uh, during flight will be reduced, thus increasing the penetration power of the shell. 
It can also increase the effective firing range of the gun. On the other hand, the limitation of this type of gun is the shells, the structure of the shells will be more complicated, and uh, the the accuracy of the gun will be affected by the design of the shell and many other factors. So that's the limitation of a smoothbore gun. The Japanese version also mentioned the differences in transmission between T55 and T62A. It says T55. There's a bigger gap between the first and second set of、uh, road wheels. This is different from T62 because for T62, the third, fourth, and fifth road wheels have bigger gaps. This is different from T55, in which the gap is between the first and the second row wheels. Moreover, the Japanese version also mentioned that it takes eight hours to prepare for folding, meaning that、uh, if the tank wants to、uh, go across the river, it needs eight hours to prepare for the snorkeling system. But once it gets off the water, it can fire its first shot within 90 seconds. Lastly, the Japanese version mentioned that T62A has infrared vision system, and when the tank was hit, the fire extinguisher worked automatically. And the manual says the most unique feature of T62. Is that it is the first tank to equip smoothbore gun, and later this design was used in T-72's 125 millimeter gun, as well as the Western tank's 120 millimeter gun. In that sense, T-62 is a pioneer of smoothbore tank gun. Therefore, in the history of tank design, T-62 tank has a very important. Place in history. Next, let's take a look at the steps involved in building this tank. Step one: assembling the wheels. Good to see that we're using poly caps, making it easier to take off the wheels and put them back on. Step two: the lower hull. I recommend connecting A12. After C19 is attached to the hull. Also note that the suspension arms are molded as a part of the lower hull. This makes the model's suspension very strong, so I I don't have any complaints. Step three, fixing of the wheels. In this step,、um, pay attention to A18. A18 is for holding the top and the bottom hulls together. I understand the purpose of this part. However, in my experience, I found it to be easily break apart. So when it broke apart, I didn't glue it back. Step four, upper hull. In this step, we will use a wire mesh. It's good to have that. Although it does not look as good as photo edge, but it's still very good to have it. A17 and A14. Those are those are also the parts help to secure the upper and lower hull together. Step five, the upper hull. So in this step, you are assembling the headlights, tow hook, and other accessories. It's great to have a picture on the left. I really like those old Tamiya kits. They always give you a picture so that you know how they should look like after the assembly. This is very very helpful. Step six, we are also working on the upper hull. So there are guard rails for the headlights, storage boxes, and other accessories. No problems at all. Step seven, the other side of the upper hull. Again, the fuel tanks, storage boxes, tail lights, other ac accessories. Simple. Step eight: two-piece gun barrel. This is not ideal, but understand that this is an old kit. So back then, one piece slide-molded 
gun barrel was not a thing, so just we'll just have to deal with this. My biggest complaint of the kit is this part, C37. So according to the menu, the front part needs to be painted in, in khaki. So I s assume that is the gun canvas. However, the thickness of this part does not at all look like the gun canvas. So this part looks very, very non-realistic. Moving on, next step, the searchlights, main searchlights, hatches, no problem. Machine gun, overall speaking, there's a good amount of details. But we do have to fill the ejector pin mark on the body of the gun. Again, the pictures on the left are very, very helpful. So I really like the Tamiya instruction manuals. Next, step 10, the turret. It's a, the turret is very easy to build. You may want to fill some gaps between the, the two halves of the turret, but it's not very visible, so it should be fine. Another complaint I have about the, the kit is right here. These two pieces, I assume that C12, that's the gun side. On the other side, C34, I assume that that's the port for the machine gun. They do not look very well if you just attach them to the turret. It's going to look like a onion ring in front of the turret. So it looks very bad. You definitely want to use some putty to fill the gap between the, the ring and the turret. Also, in this step, you are supposed to attach the wheels to the turret. Those wheels are very fragile, so be careful when you remove them from the sprue. Also, you may want to sand down the tip of the wheels so that it makes it easier to get into the holes on the turret. Another place you want to fill is around the C23. That's the shell ejector. So once the main gun fire around, the shell goes out from this door. This is a very flat piece and it is supposed to attach to a rounded turret. So you can imagine that there will be some gaps between these two pieces and that's where you want to fill. Next step is the fuel tanks. Each has two pieces. After you glue this, the two halves, you will have some seam lines. They are very visible, so you need to, to fix them before priming and painting. Another thing, maybe a typo I found on this page, is that fuel tank B should be on the left of the vehicle. Fuel tank A should be on the right side of the vehicle. And finally, the last step is to attach everything. The fuel tanks, the log, and the accessories for, the, for snorkeling. Nothing to worry about. Although I do find that the brackets I mentioned earlier for securing the upper and lower hole, they do not sit well with each other. It could be just me, but you want to pay attention. Alternatively, you may not need to use them you can simply glue the, the top and bottom half together, and that's it. Tamiya provides these brackets. I believe that's for the RC model. You actually have a motor in it. You also have batteries in the hole. So from time to time, you actually need to remove the top hole to replace the battery. And that's why they designed the, this bracket to secure the top and the lower hole so that you don't have to glue them. But for this kit, uh, we are not building it as an RC model, so we don't actually need to use the brackets. That's why I don't think we need to keep them. We can just simply ignore these brackets and glue the top and, and bottom half. So, 
that's it. It's uh, that's all the 12 steps involved in building this kit. It's a very nice kit, and you can build it over a weekend. That's why I love those Tamiya kits. This is the first part of the review, in which we went through the instruction manual and talk about the things to pay attention to when building the model kit. In the next part of the review, we will show you the complete tank and point out some issues I had with this model kit. I will also summarize the pros and cons of the model kit and make recommendations. Hope you find this video informational and helpful. Please let me know what you think about this Tamiya T62A model kit. Do you like it? Hate it? Please leave your comment below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.